Hello, my friends. How are you? I hope you're enjoying the first day of spring and this beautiful Saturday that we actually have some nice weather. Mm -hmm. I did get out for just a little bit. Um, but a bunch of my friends keep asking me how I made this. I'll show you the finished one and then I'm going to try and make a better video to um, follow along. <clears throat> so you might have seen this. It wasn't the best video. Unfortunately, I wasn't as prepared as I would have liked to have been. But what this is, is kind of a light fixture for your patio or maybe your camper and you want to hang it outside. It's made completely from Dollar Store product, Dollar Tree product. And I'm going to go over what those components are. And it's you can probably put together one for about six dollars. So I'm making several because I'm going to put them on my back patio. I also have a farmer's market booth coming up and I think they'll look cool from inside the tent. Um, so I do all kinds of crafts, not just what you see me chalking on and that type of stuff. Um, so, you know, maybe this idea can help you. So I'm going to, I have a piece of cardboard down because I have all the components I'm working with happen to be black and it's a little bit difficult to see. So if you come into the chat, if you could say hi, let me know that you're watching and I'll try and go over everything that you need to do it the way I did it. There's, there's many versions of this project out there. Okay, so I'm going to just put the camera down and we're going to get started. Why? Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's my desk. For this project, um, all of the supplies that I got, I got at the Dollar Tree. I don't mind my drinks over here. Um... So the first thing that you want to get, if you want to do a round one, this is a wire plant hanger. It does come with the hook and the chain. I've just taken it off. Okay. Um, it clips right onto these three pieces. So that's what you see when I held it up. Um, so that's what you're going to be attaching the fencing to. You're going to need a lot of zip ties. Um, get the black ones that way you don't have to spray paint um, a good pair of scissors these are my Tim Holtz cut anything scissors you're going to need three or more if you want mine has three these are the garden steak lights right from the from the Dollar Tree um, these have been a little bit hard to come by um, but they just glow and we're going to take the bottoms off of them and use them because they kind of look like candles. And then you're going to need some E6000 glue um, or something similar. Like I have a brand, this brand too, Household, Hoger, Amazing Goop. You know, you want a very strong glue. I have very good success with E6000. You can pick that up at Walmart or a similar place to that. Okay, then you're going to need, I'm going to show you what it comes to you looking like, and then I'm going to show you what you need to do to it. So this is the landscape fencing that you can get at the Dollar Tree. It is four panels. It's called Garden Fence. There's the tag. And what I've already gone ahead and done is... I've trimmed off this portion on the top too, and the three legs, okay? And then on the other end, these two pieces, so I've just cut them off. And then I've cut up one panel off. 
So you need two pieces of fence to make one chandelier, okay? So when I show you what I have, it's gonna look a little bit different because I've already trimmed it. But I'm saving this piece because if you make enough of them, you could take four of these and you could do four sides. Okay. So, we don't need this right now, we don't need this guys right now, so we're just going to put them off to the side. And what you do need is your trimmed three panels of landscape fencing. Okay, now I kind of thought about this, but there's a couple different ways you could do this. I did mine with the rounded edge facing up. And I think that looks fine. You could turn it the other way. You could go like this. And that would also look just fine as well. Um, so it could kind of go that way. But I did mine this way. So all you're going to do is I find starting at kind of one edge and kind of like utilizing this line of the wire basket. I wouldn't recommend doing it where you have to clip it, but start it there. And then you're just going to take your zip ties. And the first one is about the hardest. I make so that the zip tie is on the inside. So, you know, you get that bump from where it closes. So I just kind of, I do struggle a little bit with the first one. Okay. And it's harder to keep it in the camera. But you see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of utilizing that curly cue and I'm gonna try and line it up from the inside to that line okay and it's not a hundred percent tight yet I am going to put another one down here because it's my starter piece and I always forget which way these go but that seems about right and then I'm just going to try and get this to be as straight as I can okay and then I am going to tighten it because you're trying to make something square on something round. It's not impossible, but okay. So then I'm just going to kind of fold it around until, and it won't be perfectly round. It, it just won't be. But I find that if you kind of help yourself with putting the top and the bottom because you can always cut that and release it if you don't like the way that it looks but to at least get it started if you do the two top pieces it becomes much easier so then all I'm going to do is I'm going to use that curly cue I'm going to come right around and I'm going to feed that zip tie and of course it wound up on one of my hanger pieces, but that's okay. Just be careful not to go through there. Because you want to be able to get your chain back in there. Okay. And if I had moved it over just a little bit. There we go. So I'm probably going to release this one because there isn't enough to grip to where this is winding up in a space. So let's see if that helps us. Yeah, I think it will. Not quite as tight. And then you can just kind of like manipulate it a little bit. 
Then what you want to do, or what I would recommend doing, is you kind of want to attach it over here. So I'm just coming, just going to kind of find your little spots to do this where it isn't able to be seen that much. Okay, so now you've got it fairly even. Okay, and you just don't want it to be tipping. You want it to be, and mine is tipping a little bit. But you can move that down. Move that over. Okay, then you're gonna take your other piece that you've cut and you're just gonna match it up. So what I have found is easiest is to kind of put it together first. And of course you want your zip ties to be on the inside. So I'm just gonna, on the seams I do put a couple extras. I don't think it's all that noticeable. And this is the important part because you want to make sure it's like as even as you can get it. Okay, so now those two are kind of attached. I'm going to put I'm going to put one more around here. And that is going around the wire to try and give it a little bit of stability. And I don't cut the tails for a while. Okay, and then you just want to make sure that it's straight, as straight as it can get. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to meet up these two seams. And I'm sure this video is just fantastic quality, but I kind of wanted to do a little bit better job than I did the last time. Okay, so all I'm doing is feeding that through because I want this to match up. as best I can. Oh, wrong way. I always do that. Again. I did it again. Dang it. Turn around. Come on. Alright, there we go. All right, so you just, I'm just trying to keep a focus on the bottom best I can. Hi, Tom. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. Um, I mean, for about six dollars. All right, so we've got that piece together. And what might be easier You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to release this guy. Just to give myself a little play here. And then I'm just going to put it back together. And I'm going to try and line it up on this wire. And I'm going to so I've got it on the wire of the basket, and I'm going to do this backwards again, I have a feeling, yeah. And then I have it through, turn around thing, and then I have it through, here I'll show you in just a second, 
because it's going to cinch down, hopefully. I just want that little knob in the back. Okay, yeah, there you go. Now, it's not perfectly straight. Remember, this is a dollar store project. So, up here I can see that I need another one. So that's fine. All I'm going to do is loop this the right way, nice and tight, and maybe could use another one. down here because that'll kind of unify the shape a little bit and then all we're going to do is trim our tails dag nab it I keep doing it the wrong way Okay, now you just don't want this to be in here like cattywampus, and I think I am a little bit, but I can smooth that out a little bit by just more zip ties. You know, you can kind of fix it up. It's the first time I kind of experienced that. So you just gotta play with it a little bit. Make sure it's as straight as you can get it. The bottom is not gonna be a perfect circle. It's just not possible. The first one that I made of these, I did do it with um, four panels and two, and then I had some leftovers, and I did another one, I think it was like three, and then some individual ones. Um, so far, the easiest has been three and three. Now, you could bend this plastic a little bit by um, just heating it up with a heat gun if you wanted to. And when you look at it, you're going to see that there's certain places that it just needs to be closer to the fencing, like here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, about all that. Okay, all right. So that's kind of your base. And then all you do is come around snip off these interior tails, if you will. It'll look a lot better once we get this trimmed up. Okay, I'm going to flip it this way. Okay, there's all our tails. All right, so now here's what we've got. It kind of goes out, oh, missed one. Kind of goes out like a lampshade on the bottom, which is fine by me. Granted, this is just, you know, just to have some fun with some dollar store stuff. That's really the entire purpose. Okay, now I see over here, it would help if I could cinch that in a little bit closer. So I'm gonna do that. And when you're doing it and you're looking at it, you're gonna be able to tell where you need it and where you don't. Come on. How's it going, Tom? How's everything at the house and work and everything? Good, I hope. Okay, that makes it a little bit better. 
All right, cool. Um, so you just have to do it in stages. All right, so you've got that. The next thing you need to do is your little chain. Well, these have kind of clasps at the bottom. So all I'm going to do is try and open it. And the wire basket has three, we're going to call them built-in hooks. That will equally space this out for you. Okay, I know you can't see it, but if I go this direction, it is now holding up by the chain. Okay, so the last thing to do is to put the lights in it um, because we went all black, so we don't have to spray paint anything, which is awesome. Here's what I used. This is the Dollar Tree solar light. You're gonna unscrew it from the bottom. So see how that looks like a candle? You're gonna pull this piece to activate it. And then what you're gonna do is, is you're just gonna take some of your E6000 glue and you're gonna, see there it goes, there goes the light. And you're going to put it on the two wire pieces here, and you're going to space them every two apart. And these aren't, you know, I wouldn't waste a lot of money on these. Because you might get, you know, a season out of these. So you don't want to spend. <clears throat> but these are called solar steak lights and I don't know I'm gonna come up with an idea for the actual steaks so here's all I do so I got my E6000 I have found it's easier to put the glue on the wire of the basket and if you don't want to put light um, lights in them. You don't have to. You could put the cocoa liner in here and put flowers. You could do whatever you want. This is just my crazy idea. Okay, so then this goes and glues right to the wire. And that it, leave, it leaves the solar part exposed so that way it can recharge. One, two... So the next one's going to go here, and then one, two, and then over there. Okay. And this glue is pretty good. It'll be ready to go in like 24 hours, for sure. Oh, put it in the wrong spot. Not the end of the world. We wanted it over here. It's okay. Boom. And when you go to glue these in, if you unfortunately ha have been uh, not straight on the top, it won't glue properly. <laughs> it just won't. So take your time. Fight with it. I figured I'd just throw one of these together because I wanted to make a bunch of them and I've got paint drying all over the place. So, And that's it. So that's what it looks like from the top. I'm just going to get my hook here. So I can see in there. It's the solar lights. And then I'll come up to the other view of me. 
Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but those lights, they're not on right now, but they were. But they are looking like they are candles in there. And that's it. That's all you do. And you can sit here and shape it and play with it and all you want. So just wanted to share that quick idea. Um, it's about a 30 minute project. If you have a campsite, it's fun for outside your camper, uh, your back patio, you know, a million places. These are gonna go in my, um, I'm actually doing a farmer's market. And so I have a tent, so I'm gonna hang them up inside the tent just for a little ambiance. Um, if you're local, uh, starting, let's see, where will I be? Uh, on May 8th, I'll be at the EHT Recreation Center. There's a show there, um, outside, completely socially distanced, and it's like a craft fair, completely free to get into. Um, and then for starting May 30th through June 27th on Sunday only from 10 to 1, at the Skullville Fire Hall, they're going to have a farmer's market. And that's literally, I could walk there from my house. So I've signed up to do that one too. So if you'd like some decor or some chalk ideas, I'm gonna have all kinds of things, aprons, you name it, all the stuff that I make. Um, stop by and see me. Um, it's 10 to one on Sundays, be five Sundays. And then the May 8th show is I believe 10 to two. So it's a quick one. So get out there and uh, enjoy the sunshine today. And um, I'm finishing up some other projects, which I will show you just for the sake of proving that I'm working on stuff, I guess. <laughs> um, so I've got to finish this one up. It says, welcome to our home. I'm going to put a plaid over it. This is the finished one. This was for an order. It says, may our home overflow with warm memories and laughter. And you hang it on your door. And I sold the, these to a realtor, so I have to bow this one. She wanted a duplicate of this. And then this is what the other one that I showed you will look like. Welcome to our home. Um, again, this was sold to a realtor. And um, I just got to do the bows and I got to seal them. And then I'm doing one for my front door because I have black accents on our house. So I did a black one, may our home overflow with warm memories and laughter. And then I'm going to put the tile design on the top and the bottom just to be, because that kind of matches my house. So I'm busy creating away, so I hope that I can see you at a show real soon. If you uh, would like a door hanger, um, I take custom orders, and um, this is an 18 inch round to give you an idea. I can do multiple designs and patterns, colors, um, and um, you know, they're $35. So message me if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.